information for patients, esophagectomy, surgical removal of a section of the food pipe, Liverpool Heart and Chest Hospital NHS Foundation Trust, Thomas Drive, Liverpool, Merseyside, L14, 3 Peg, Telephone, 0151-228-1616, www.lhch. .nhs .uk. This leaflet has been written to provide information about a surgery to remove a section of the food pipe, gullet, or esophagus. We hope it answers some of the questions or concerns you may have about the procedure. It is not intended to replace talking with medical or nursing staff. The esophagus. The esophagus is the medical name for the gullet. It is part of the digestive system that is often referred to as the food pipe. The esophagus is a long tube that carries food from the throat to the stomach. The top part of the esophagus lies behind the windpipe. Trachea, the bottom part runs down through the chest between the spine and the heart. What are the causes of esophageal cancer? The body is made up of millions of different types of cells. Cancer happens when some of the cells multiply in an abnormal way, causing a growth called a tumor to form. Tumors can be cancerous, benign, or cancerous, malignant. Men are affected more than women and it occurs, generally in older people. One type of esophageal cancer, known as adenocarcinoma, appears to be more common in people who have long-term acid reflux, backflow of stomach acid into the stomach. Another type is called squamous cell carcinoma and is more common among smokers and people who drink a lot of alcohol or have a poor diet. What is an esophagectomy? Esophagectomy is the surgical removal of the gullet. There are two main ways of doing this operation. By making cuts in the stomach and either the left or right side of the chest, the surgical team, the team of gastrointestinal, GI, consultant surgeons work across more than one hospital site. For example some members of the team work between the Royal Liverpool University Hospital and Liverpool Heart and Chest Hospital. Each consultant is specially trained in performing this type of surgery. When you are initially reviewed in clinic by one of the consultant surgeons, it is important to know that this may not necessarily be the consultant surgeon who will perform your operation as they often have to cover each other's operation lists when required. Following your surgery you will be looked after by a member of the team and the upper GI nurse specialist. What does the operation involve for esophagectomy? The operation is performed under a general anesthetic so therefore, you will be asleep during the procedure. The procedure involves freeing up and reshaping the stomach to allow it to be pulled up into the chest, removing the cancer and parts of the esophagus, removing the surrounding tissue, lymph nodes that may have cancer in them joining the stomach to the upper part of the esophagus. Sometimes it may be necessary to insert a temporary feeding tube into the stomach. How long does the procedure take? The procedure usually takes approximately 4 hours although this varies depending on each individual's condition. What are the benefits of having the operation? Your consultant will discuss with you the perceived individual benefits of having surgery. The main aim of the surgery is to remove the cancer. The treatment however may be combined with chemotherapy and or radiotherapy. Are there any alternatives to the operation? Surgical removal of the gullet is currently the only potential cure for esophageal cancer. Not everyone with esophageal cancer however is suitable for surgery. Other treatments which aim to control the spread of the disease and to help alleviate symptoms include chemotherapy, radiotherapy and stent insertion. A stent is a wire mesh tube which helps to keep the esophagus open. Your doctor would be happy to discuss any alternative treatments if they are applicable to you. Are there any risks to the operation? As with all surgical procedures, surgery to remove the esophagus carries some risks. These risks vary according to your overall health and your individual condition. You will have an opportunity to discuss the risks and the benefits of the proposed surgery so that you have sufficient information to be able to sign the consent form. Some of the risks involved with esophageal surgery include wound infections, chest infections and blood clots developing in the leg, deep vein thrombosis, or in the lung pulmonary embolism. There is also a risk of the new joint between the stomach and the esophagus failing to heal, leaving a leak at the joint, an astomotic leak. If this happens a further operation may be needed. All of the risks involved will be discussed in more detail prior to the surgery taking place. You will be given the opportunity to have a further appointment with the upper GI nurse specialist prior to surgery to give you an opportunity 
to discuss any concerns you may have. Preparation for surgery, anesthetist. The anesthetist is the doctor responsible for putting you to sleep, for the operation, and taking expert care of you during and immediately after the procedure. They usually visit you the day before your operation to check on your general health, ask you some questions about your previous medical history, and check your heart, lung and blood test results. Any medications you are taking, or any allergies you have will be discussed. The anesthetist will be particularly interested to know if you have had any chest or heart problems. They will explain the routine the night before, and the day of surgery, and will let you know what to expect. It is a good opportunity for you to discuss any fears or anxieties you may have about having an anesthetic pain relief following surgery. There are several ways of relieving pain following surgery including a continuous injection of a local anesthetic and strong painkillers through a small plastic tube in your back, epidural, or an infusion of painkillers through a small tube into your vein, usually in the back of our hand, patient-controlled analgesia. The anesthetist or specialist nurse will discuss methods of pain, control in more detail, getting ready for theater. The nursing staff on the ward will help you get ready for your operation. You will not have anything to eat or drink in the morning. You will probably also be given a sleeping tablet to help you relax. You will have a shower and change into a clean gown. Elastic stockings will be provided. These are compression stockings to help prevent you getting a blood clot in your legs. You will need to remove all your jewelry, although you may wear plain band rings. However, during the operation you will be given quite a lot of fluid in your IV drip. This may make your fingers may swell up. If you do leave ring on make sure it isn't fitting too tight and it must be covered with tape before you go to theater. If you have false teeth, glasses or a hearing aid you can leave these in place until you arrive in theater. Before you leave the ward the nurse looking after you will go through a checklist with you. What happens in the anesthetic room? When you come to theater you will go to the anesthetic room. You will meet other members of the anesthetic aesthetic team, a health care assistant, HCA, and an operating department practitioner, ODP. One of them will go through some routine checks to make sure you are in the right place and that routine preparations have been carried out. You will be moved from your bed onto the narrow operating table. The anesthetist will put a drip into one of your arms, which may sting a little. The ODP will place some sticky pads on your chest to monitor your heartbeat and a blood pressure cuff on one of your arms. If you are having an epidural, the anesthetist will probably do this next. You may be asked to sit up and lean forward. After scrubbing his or her hands, the anesthetist will clean your skin with a cold solution to reduce the risk of infection. The actual insertion of the epidural usually takes only a few minutes. If you feel any pain in your back or strange sensations, tell the anesthetist, but try to remain still. If you are not having an epidural, or when it has been done, the anesthetist will then put you to sleep with an injection into your drip. You will usually be asked to take a few breaths of oxygen from a plastic face mask whilst you are going off to after the operation. After the operation, you will be taken to the POCCU, Post-Operative Critical Care Unit, or the Higher Dependency Unit, HDU. This is a large intensive care ward where you will be looked after closely. There will be a nurse by your bed most of the time. It is quite normal to feel washed out when you wake up as it will have been long and major operation. As you are waking up you may become aware of the anesthetist taking a tube out of your mouth. When that has been done you will be given a clear plastic oxygen mask. This helps your breathing and you will wear the oxygen mask for a few days. There will be a lot of monitoring equipment near your bed. Do not be alarmed by this. It is quite routine. You will also have the following tubes attached to you. They are there to help and are normal practice. Three drips one in your arm to give you fluids, one in your wrist to measure your blood pressure and one in your neck to estimate how much fluid you need. A tube in your nose which goes into your stomach. This drains the stomach contents so that you won't be sick and put strain on your wound by vomiting. This tube can make your throat feel sore. A thin tube catheter will be in your bladder to drain the urine out as your mobility will be reduced and you may have trouble passing urine. This catheter drains continually and is held in place by means of a small balloon. It can't fall out if you move or stand up. A feeding tube in your abdomen that will allow us to give you the nutrients you need until you are eating and drinking enough calories. This may be kept in for a few weeks at home. You will also have two chest drains to allow the lung to inflate fully after the operation. You will not be allowed to eat 
or drink anything for approximately five days. After that you may have a special x-ray to check that the joints in the gut are healing properly before you are allowed to drink normally and then to start eating. You will also be referred to a dietitian so that your specific needs can be assessed. The drains, drips and catheter will be removed gradually over 7 to 10 days if your progress is satisfactory. Your pain relief will continually be assessed and managed. It is important that your bowels have been working before you go home. Please let us know if you experience any problem. Discharge. Overall, if there are no complications your hospital stay is usually between 2 and 3 weeks. When you are up and about, eating and drinking properly, and your wounds are healing well, you may be considered fit for discharge. Before your discharge, a member of staff will go through discharge arrangements such as district nurse, tablets to take home, appointments and sick notes etc. Advice at home after surgery. After any major surgery you will feel weak for some time, your strength will gradually improve, but it may take up to 3 to 6 months before you feel at our peak again. This differs from person to person. Some important points to remember are listed below. At first, you will feel very tired and will need to rest often. Avoid the temptation to nap in the chair. When you feel tired go to bed and sleep for an hour. Don't try and keep yourself awake. Don't overdo household jobs. The sort of movements that can cause discomfort are bending or stretching, lifting heavy weights, and pushing or pulling. Standing for long periods can be tiring. Exercise is important, but only start off with gentle exercise such as a short walk and build up gradually. Don't overdo it. Your body is still healing. Climbing stairs can be surprisingly tiring, but is a useful way of getting exercise and judging your progress. The time at which you can start driving varies according to the type of operation you have and, and your overall progress. Ask your doctor for specific advice. Remember your movement and strength must be up to coping with an emergency stop as well as ordinary driving. If diarrhea is a problem let your doctor know as soon as possible. You may notice you some numbness and a tingling feeling around your wound. This is because the nerves that are cut during the operation are slow to heal and make the area more sensitive. It can take up to 12 months for this to settle. What changes should I make to the way I eat? Following your operation you will now be able to eat solid food again. Your operation has meant the removal of part of the stomach and gullet. This means that your stomach will be smaller and will be higher up towards the chest. Your dietitian will discuss the following in more detail with you before you go home. Eat little and often. Eat slowly. Try to make food and drinks as nourishing as you can. You may feel full up more quickly than before. Don't drink with meals. You will be more at risk of reflux, heartburn. To avoid this try not to eat late in the evening. Try to keep your weight set. Further information. National Cancer Support Services. The cancer information specialist nurses give information on all aspects of cancer and its treatment, and on the practical and emotional aspects of living with cancer. Phone 0808800123. Lines open Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. Macmillan Cancer Support, a national charity providing expert treatment and care through specialist Macmillan nurses and doctors. Phone 0808808220. Lines open Monday Friday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Oesophageal Patients Association, an organization of people who have or had cancer of the oesophagus. Phone 0121704986. Lines open Monday Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Welfare Rights Service. There will be a benefits advisor from local solutions in the Macmillan Cancer Information and Support Center at Liverpool Hospital every Wednesday to make an appointment phone 015170637200 Upper GI Clinical Nurse Specialist The Liverpool Heart and Chest Hospital Thomas Drive Liverpool L143 PE Phone 015160012180156001 or 015160011018 Monday Friday 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Leaflet information TPALS 060 version 3 publication date January 2008 review May 2012 Liverpool Heart and Chest Hospital NHS Foundation Trust